Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Peltier, Chief Medical Officer at North Oaks Medical Center in Hammond, Louisiana, giving you your weekly coronavirus update. It is the 16th of March today, and uh, Louisiana certainly has gotten its share of cases since last week. As of the LDH website later this afternoon, uh, we've had about 114 cases, uh, and we've even had two deaths in the state of Louisiana. Thus far, we have no cases in the um, parish of Tangipahoa, uh, but we do have some cases just to the east of us uh, in St. Tammany Parish, and certainly to the southeast of us in uh, Orleans and Jefferson Parish, which seem to have a good number of cases over the especially past couple of days. So we have certainly moved into a local community spread in those areas. Uh, we continue to uh, be vigilant and uh, be prepared here at North Oaks. So um, you know, we, we want to go over a few general rules that have been coming up. Uh, we have changed our visitor policy uh, recently uh, to allow only one person in the facility at a time per patient. That is subject to change as well. And the idea again is with social distancing, we want to restrict as many people that could come in and out of any facility that could potentially bring uh, illness into our facility and you know, uh, infect uh, a patient that uh, otherwise was not in for a respiratory illness. We're going to still take care of our community here with all of the other things that we've been taking care of for years and years, but they are a vulnerable patient population, even more vulnerable than a nursing home would be. So um, you will be screened when you come into our facility uh, to make sure you're not feeling ill. And if you are feeling ill, unfortunately, we're not gonna allow you to come visit. And I think everybody certainly understands why. Um, so let's talk a little bit about social distancing and all of the changes that have occurred over the past week. As all of you know, on Friday, the governor uh, made a bunch of uh, declarations, including closing schools and limiting gathering sizes. Um, it's important that we do those things. And more than the government uh, coming down and, and distancing people at, with some things like school clo closures, you need to consider your personal obligation as a citizen to uh, restrict your interactions between other people. I feel it's especially important to, if you, you know, if you have a group of children that have been taken off from school, if you create a new group and everybody's visiting each other, you've defeated the purpose of canceling school in the first place. So your kids need to stay at home. They can certainly, it's beautiful outside, have them go outside and play. But the interaction between large groups is especially problematic. So try to keep your kids uh, away from big parks and those kind of places where there would be lots of interaction, but enjoy the outdoors. Um, other, other groups are just as important. Try to limit as much as you can. You'll see that your places of business may be talking about um, you working from home or doing something else so that you are not necessarily intermingling with your other coworkers. As many things as we do, all of those things are additive. Every little bit adds to the overall social distancing that we're doing. Um, again, you know, I, I use the term citizenship, you know, we, we all try to help our neighbor out. I would, a good analogy is the flu shot. There's so many people every year that say, oh, well, I don't get the flu shot, I'm young and healthy. I tell them, you don't get the flu shot for you, you get the flu shot so that you don't spread the disease to somebody who doesn't, um, who won't be able to fight it. Certainly somebody young is most likely to survive for the flu but somebody with comorbid condition, that's who it hurts. So don't get the flu shot for yourself, get the flu shot for your community. Do the social distancing, not for yourself, but for your, your friends, families, and neighbors. So let's talk about what you gotta do if you do get sick. First of all, there's various degrees of sickness. Everybody's really nervous about whether they have COVID right now or not. And it's important that somebody with in this time of year when the cars are green and the azaleas are blooming and the ligustrums are going crazy, everybody's got the sniffles. So first of all, I would tell you, if you're just having very mild symptoms, you should stay at home. What are mild symptoms? Fever even, runny nose, little bit of a cough, all of those things are mild symptoms. 
If you do choose to um, talk to your provider or have some medical interaction, call first. Have a discussion with your physician. Most of the physicians in the community we have been in touch with, they want to do as many telephone or video visits as they possibly can. That way they can determine, do you really need to come in into an environment where if you are sick, you could spread it or you could actually get it by coming to that environment if you're not, don't have it in the first place. So I would tell you, always make a phone call to your provider before you come in. And that's true of our emergency department everywhere else. You know, if you're feeling sick, let people know that you're coming and there could be some screening. To that point, we've set up a, uh, a public line. Uh, it's 985-230-2778. I'll repeat that again, 985-230-2778. And that is our uh, COVID line for people to call in uh, that want to be screened. If you have mild disease, you may not need this type of screening, but they have the ability to do a video visit to determine if you're really somebody at risk at this time that needs to be seen. And they will give you some direction as to whether it's appropriate for you to be seen in one of our walk-in clinics or whether you're severely ill and they need you seen or admitted to the hospital or seen in our emergency department. So please utilize that line as much as possible um, instead of just going to a, whether it's a clinic or our emergency departments or anywhere else try to utilize that, that particular line to, so we can triage people to the right place to get them the right level of care. But I will tell you, if you're not feeling well and you have very mild system, symptoms, our recommendation is that you stay home right now. Testing is limited currently. The testing is limited because of the number of test kits that are available and we are trying to save those test kits for the severely ill patients to determine course of care. So unless you have shortness of breath, and that's the symptom that would be worrisome, shortness of breath is one that our providers would want to physically see you and to check you out to make sure you're not worsening. Short of shortness of breath, my recommendation for most patients is to stay at home, self-isolate, um, try to stay away from others, wash your hands frequently, um, you know, um, don't share household utensils or items. It's not the time to, you know, say, hey, um, come taste this yummy ice cream and share a spoon. All of those little things really do make a difference. So think about all your actions. Teach your children how to properly wash their hands and do it for 20 or 30 seconds. Every little action that we take as citizens impacts the rest of our group. So do them, do them all, and do them well. And your community will be much better off for it. We continue to have uh, take questions. We're gonna do a second video today to answer some of the frequent questions that have been uh, passed through our Facebook, um, our Twitter accounts, all our social media on North Oaks. You can always go to North Oaks slash coronavirus. That's www.northoaks.org slash coronavirus and get all of our information on our website, and I encourage everyone to do that. Thank you, and send in your questions.